you into a Psalm 150 moment where nothing but our voices will give God praise. Our, nothing but our voices will give him worship. So when I count to three, I just want the voices to give God praise. One, two, three. Come on, come on, lift your voice. Lift your voice, lift your voice. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Press through your fresh. Come on, this is Psalm 150 moment. Let everything that have breath praise ye the Lord. It's easy for us to hide behind the music, but when you're going through something, you have nothing but the original string instrument, your vocal cords. So come on, lift your voice, God, we praise you. God, we honor you, we honor you. We lift you up, God, we use our voice tonight to give you praise. We give you the fruit of our lips. God, we let a sound arise from the inside of us. God, we know that there's nobody like you. Can't nobody do you, do us like you, Jesus. So, Father, we give you the purest of our praise tonight. We lavish you with our praise. We lavish you with our love tonight through our voices. God, we're not going to depend on the music. We're going to depend on you. Come on, saints, about 30 more seconds. Come on, Zion. Lift your voice. Lift your voice. Lift your voice. Lift your voice. Come on. Come on. Come on. God, we praise you. Hallelujah. You are from everlasting to everlasting. You are the rose of Sharon, Lily of the Valley, wonderful counselor, mighty God, the Prince of Peace. You are the Lord God Almighty. You are the Lord God mighty in battle. You are the King of glory. So we lift you up tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now the musicians are going to join in. And we're all going to give God praise together. One more time, lift your voice. Hallelujah. God, we give you praise tonight. And we honor you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God, we love you because you first loved us. And for that, we say thank you. Hallelujah. Let's give our king a thunderous applause tonight. Amen. At home, you already know what to do. Go ahead and make sure you share this. Somebody needs a word from the Lord tonight. And tonight is their night. I want you to be their hope dealer tonight. I want you to deal hope all on your Facebook timeline tonight because somebody needs some hope. So just tell your people on your timeline, I am your pusher man tonight, and I'm pushing hope right down your alley. Hallelujah. Look, fellas, fellas, don't forget, we need to go ahead and register for our men's breakfast June 17th. I believe the seats are starting to fill up. I haven't checked the numbers. I forgot to ask Deacon and Charlotte today, but um, I know some gentlemen started to register yesterday, so make sure, fellas, you do that. Also, let's go ahead and email in our pictures of us with our children and or our family. Make sure you email that in for Father's Day on June 18th so we can have a great time honoring all the fathers in the house. Amen. Hey, man, y'all ready for this word tonight? Because I'm telling you, it is coming hot off the press. So without further ado, while your hands are going, let's receive now our apostle and pastor of this house, Dr. Jeffrey Chapman Sr., You all may be seated. What an honor it is for us to be included in what God has called helping move in the kingdom. Sometimes we can get so adjusted to, to life, our lifestyles, things that we deem important. But there are moments we just need to stop and think that God chose me. And he chose me from the foundation of the earth to be a part of moving his kingdom. So you can't get tired. You got to keep on pushing. Because as you push, there's strength. I think the word says he will mount you on wings like eagles. He says he wants us to run. And so in this life, you have to understand, if you want to get to that next level, you're going to have to learn how to push. Yeah. I say all that to say this, you know, I have the Bible study club here tonight. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Praise the Lord. I was sharing with some of the brethren in my office 
that we're 23 years old now. And I was looking at the praise team as they were singing, and I said, the elevation <laughs> of how many people have been on that praise team <laughs> since the inception of Raleigh North Christmas. <laughs> oh my God, I'm like, and look at it today, you know, it's amazing of what God is doing in people's lives. I dare say the impact this ministry had on people's lives that have come through. Where will you be? Where will your life be? Where will your, where will your marriage be? Where will your children be? Without you being a part of this ministry. I know Pastor Ryan had made mention of this, but I, you know, want to say to all of the brothers, okay? All of you, all of you, all of you that are streaming as well, I want to personally invite you to the men's breakfast. On June 17th, we're going to have it at the Hilton Garden Inn. Now, women, you, women, you can't come. <laughs> but we're going to have it at the Hilton Garden Inn, and we're going to do some real talk. Right. You know, real talk. And, and, and you mean you know what I'm talking about because there again, iron sharpens iron. Yeah. There are certain things you can't say to your sister. You can't say to your mother. You can't even say to your, your wife. But when you get with men and talk about things that, we have to deal with in life. Uh, we need to be encouraged. But we need to be encouraged in a certain kind of way. Amen. Men need men. You can have a son that have never seen his father. But when he gets of age, he wants to look for him. Because there's something inside that said, I need that contact. And I have become surrogate fathers to a lot of these men in this church. And I take that on. I take that on to help you and to guide you. So we're going to have real man-to-man -man talk. You know, we're going to have some food. We're going to have a buffet uh, style. Um, we're going to have uh, question and answer. And I think Pastor Ryan just said that. Send your questions in. Okay, so I'm not, you know, bum-rushed. I, I want to know what y'all about to ask. <laughs> Ain't catching me. You know, not ready and not prepared. I want to know. But anyway, what we need you to do, okay, I need for all you men that have waited and delayed to register tonight, okay, register tonight. We need a head count. We need a head count to make sure we have all the seating, to make sure we have all the food and all that prepared for you. And I want you to invite another brother. Invite them that you know need it. You know they need brotherhood. Some of you have to probably make your husband come. And I have found out the ones that you have to make come has the best time. You have the best time. All right, let's get into the Word. I want you to go with me to 2 Timothy chapter 3, and we're going to start in verse 16. And I, we're going to talk about the power of expectation, but I want to teach tonight on how limitations hinder the power of expectation. We all have limitations in some way or another. Some of it comes by how we was raised. Some come by, you know, what we heard growing up. Or, you know, some of it just came by what we heard in church doctrine. But we all have some form of limitation. So I want to start this off by going to 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 16 to 17. Uh, when you have that, Deaconess. All Scripture is given by inspiration of God. Right there, you know. How many of you heard, you know, the Bible was written by so many men, and you got so many interpretations of men, and, and you know, there's mistakes in there. How many heard that before? And see, the, see, the Word has to come in and correct what we hear. See, faith cometh by hearing. I said faith cometh by hearing. See, so whatever you hear on a consistent basis becomes your faith. That's why it's imperative that it says, you know, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. It has to put that in there because, see, the Word of God kind of hearing builds faith. So it just said, what? All Scripture is given by inspiration of God. Although it was written by men, God impressed these men to write these things. Continue. And is profitable for doctrine. Okay. For I'm going to talk about doctrine tonight. The Bible says, give double honor 
to the man that preached the word and doctrine. Doctrine is simply helping you understand how to live the word of God. Okay, because there are certain things that you have to do in order to be profitable as a man and woman of God, and you have to be taught these ways. We, we heard some doctrine on Sunday morning, didn't we? Okay, that you, you don't live by the law, but you live through grace that God has given all of us. So all Scripture is given by inspiration of God, and it's profitable doctrine. Continue. For reproof, for correction. For instruction in righteousness. He said four things right there. What were those four things? Reproof. What is reproof? Okay. Okay. It says reproof. Then it says correction. Mm -hmm. So are they the same? Okay. So what, what's the difference? Oh, I thought, I thought y'all was going to say When you reprove a paper, what do you do? Huh? Can you go over and you make, you make some adjustments? So we all need adjustments. When you take your car to be in, uh, get, get tuned up, it is that. It's tuned up. They don't have to drop the engine. They just got to make adjustments. So adjustments and then correction. How many know that we need to be corrected? Okay, we just need to be correct. I'm talking about doctrine now. We need to be corrected on how we live our lives. Amen. And then it says what? For instructions. Instructions in righteousness. Verse 17. That the man of God may be perfect, throughly furnished unto, unto all good works. Okay. So I'm going to teach you doctrine tonight. Okay? Are you ready for it? Yes. Are you ready for it? You know, it, it took me a few years to even kind of dive into the topics I'm doing now, you know, in our 20, 30 year. It took me a few years to get people kind of ready to deal with stuff that is not what I call regurgitated from things we haven't heard all of our lives in the church. Don't we need some revelation? Uh, is there more revelation to Scripture than what we heard? And so, you know, it took me a while to kind of start talking about some of these things because some of these things are, are controversial. How many know the Word of God is controversial? How many know? That's, that's why the devil fights it so hard, amen. He just want to bring so much doubt into it and make you doubt certain things about the Word of God. And so over the past few months, we have been talking about the power of expectations. And I'm going to kind of start out dealing with the, the, the things that hinder us from our expectancy, what God said is ours. The season, he says, he's going to give it to you. And so you can understand that there's going to be delays along the way. That don't mean that he's not going to do it. It just means that there are certain things that, he, that he's putting together to make sure when he give it to you that you're able to handle it and the people that's going to be blessed are going to be able to handle it. Because there are some people that's not even ready. There's some people not even saved yet that's going to be a very instrumental piece of the puzzle to your life. And you have to understand that God is working things out. So let's look at Philippians 4 and 13. I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. Okay, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So he's telling me that you can do a lot of things in life, but it has to be through God. See, we want to do it apart from God because some way, somehow we feel that Sunday and, and for us Wednesday is the only day as God speaks. And then you come down on Monday and Tuesday, we want to be apart from God. We want to live our lives apart from God. We want to go to work apart from God. We want to live our marriage apart from God. We want to raise our kids apart from God. And we have to understand that God said, if you want to do it and be successful at it and be fulfilled at it, and I dare say satisfied at it, then he said, you have to do it through me. And he said, I have the blueprint. I know how this thing works, and I know what you need. How many know that you change every few years? How many have found out? You're not the same person you were. You don't even believe the same things you believe. Then how in the world, if you change, how in the world you think another person can keep up with it? <laughs> they struggling to keep up what you said five years ago. How many know that men are slow? How many know that? 
play our slow. We are stuck on what you said five years ago. We're doing everything in our power to achieve what you said five years ago. You done changed three years ago. <laughs> I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I pray this prayer in the morning. Let this mind be in me that was also in Christ Jesus. I know God's thoughts are higher than my thoughts, and his ways are higher than my ways. But Lord, just put me on the path. Let me see things, God, not from today's perspective, but let me see them a week down the road. Because when you look at things, you see things generational. So when you speak to me and you say I'm going to be a blessing, you're just not talking about today. You're talking about down the road. You're talking about the things that my children's children will experience, and you want me to line my way up to, so they can be a blessing to other people. So you have to understand, God is not so concerned about today as much as we are. This is why he don't fall out of his king chair when we have a problem. He knows it's all going to be worked out. He knows it's going to be, how, how many of you, just, just this last year, 2022, just this last year, the things that you thought were going to be permanent, the things that you thought was going to change everything, and, and, and God wasn't uptight about any of that. He knew everything was going to work out because he knows the end. So we have to understand that Christ Jesus, our Lord and our Savior, already has a plan. We just got to get on board with his plan. And, and that's a challenge, too, isn't it? It's a challenge, amen, when we have laid out a plan for our life, like we're supposed to, but it doesn't line up with his will. Then what? Then what? Are you willing to change? Are you willing to shift? Because a lot of us are not. We're not. So we're going to continue to pray, bless my plans. Bless my, and God loves us so much that he said, I will not bless those plans because the end result does not line up to what I have in store for you and the people I'm going to bless. So it is not that he don't want to give us what we pray for. He said, that's not even in my will. God stops us because our will is so strong that sometimes he has to put major roadblocks. How many talking about? He, in order to stop you, if he don't stop you, you're going to go do it. So he, he put things up. So God allows sickness. He didn't say, devil, I need to use you. Now, the devil can't jump on you anytime he wants to jump on you. No, God said, I'm going to come here. I, I need to use you. Because I am not the author of confusion, nor I'm an author of sickness. I cannot do any of this because those things are not in me. But I'm going to use you. Now, I need you to go afflict them. Because they need to be stopped. Because if they continue, they will do what they say they will do. But the end result will not be good. This is why the Bible says older people teach the younger. Because you have lived, amen, you have experienced in things that they think they know and you know already it ain't going to work out. Have you ever, amen, had to counsel your children and they were so adamant about a thing and you know what the end result going to be? The reason why daddies do not really go down with their daughter's boyfriend because daddies know how men think. I'm talking doctrine. I'm just preaching doctrine. They know how men think. And, and, and little Susie sitting up in here, hey man, he just loves me. <laughs> and the daddy come out for real. Yeah. Have to be taught. God says, line your will up to my will. Now, do I have anybody in here? Do I have anybody streaming? tonight that has high expectations for your personal life. Yes. Okay, do you have a high yes. expectation yes. for your personal life? What about your children's life? Yes. Okay, what about your nephews and nieces? Yes. What about your aunts and uncles? Yes. What, if you're married here, what about your spouse? Do you have yes. high expectations? 
Nobody goes into marriage expecting it to fail. I got high expectation that I'm going to have a great marriage. I'm not going to jump out of reality. I'm not going to have no problem. But I know we're going to evolve along the way, and we're going to be good for society. We're going to be good for the citizens of this earth. You've got to come out the gate speaking those kinds of things. Is there anybody experienced, amen, that I want to have a walk with God that shows me revelation in the Word of God? In other words, I want to go higher in the Word of God. I don't want to be just stuck on what I learned in a, a Sunday school and, and what I learned as a kid. No, there is another level that I have to go to because God has expected me. He said, I need to return on the Word I deposit in your life. And he said, when I come back and check what I put, I need to see growth. It's not that what we do when we plant something. We expect a return. We expect that thing to come up and do what it's supposed to do. So is there anybody in here expecting, amen, that my life and the Word of God that's in me become greater? Yeah. So that means that when God began to speak in areas you're not familiar with, that does not mean throw it away. Sometimes you got to follow it. Just follow. I don't understand it yet, but, but, but maybe a little later, I'll get the revelation. And a lot of us get it later. That's why you can't be so quick to talk. Can't be so quick to talk about, that ain't what the words say. And you got to come back, amen, two years later and say, I'm sorry. Okay. So what God wants to do, he said the knowledge you have right now, I just want to add on to it. And if it's not right, I want to change it. So is there anybody in here expecting to walk in a higher level of health? Okay. In other words, I don't plan to be sick. I don't. And if I do get sick, I'm not planning to stay sick. And if I am taking medication, I don't plan to take it all of my life. I am expecting a higher walk. Is anybody expecting a higher level in their prosperity? So you expect promotion, you expect raising, you expect to come up because that is what God expects out of the believer. Is there anybody say, I just want more of God in my life so I can have peace? Because, because here's the thing, peace, joy, and knowledge is one of the biggest things you can receive from God. You can get all the rest of that stuff. If you don't have peace in your life, I don't care what you have accumulated, it's going gonna, it's gonna to come to nothing. If you don't have joy, I did not say happiness, I said joy. If you don't have joy in your life, then what life, what's the word? What is that word? So you can have all of the material things and lack understanding, lack joy, and lack peace and be the most miserable person on the earth. You need to seek joy. God, seek peace. And God said, now I'm the one that can give it to you, okay? And I'm going to give you through the Word, through the Word. Is there anybody expecting to be more blessed next year than you are this year? In other words, I'm not going down. I'm going up. I'm going up. Now, for any one of you that could not expect those things I just said in your life, it's time for you to take some limits off. Okay, because, because your limitation, okay, not, no one else, your limitation is causing you not to go as high as you could. And this is why God, he, he, he needs you to have some mentors or he needs you to have some people that you can see that's already reached certain levels so that when you see them, you say, I can do that too. But when you don't have none of that in your life, it's hard. It is hard to even imagine that you can reach those high places. You need to see somebody already walking in it I mean, and operating in it. And God said, I'm calling you to be that person. So I'm going to have to break some chains off you and break some old theology off you and some old doctrine off so you can receive that level of living. So I want you to take the limits off. Now, get this. Don't you be the one that's limiting yourself. Don't you be the one limiting yourself. D let me split this way. Don't be the one limiting your harvest. Okay. See, when you work on a job, for the most part, you know, you're limited with your pay. 
How many would agree with that? Okay, you know, sometimes you can tap out, you know, in the positions you have. Sometimes you can just tap out, and, you know, and, and, and the best you can do is go lateral. But, but, but you can't go up no more. You, you done tapped out. But if you open a business, the potential is endless. See, it may start out a struggle, but if you work that thing, somebody saying do season. I need somebody, because somebody is limiting themselves because they didn't want to go through all the work. They, they like getting paid every Friday because that's easy. I don't even got to think about it. I, don't even, I, can, I can sleep half the day and still get paid on my job. But when God called you to go higher and said, I don't want you to be capped out, I put the ability in you to start your own thing. So, so what I'm saying, do not limit your harvest. Because God already has set a harvest aside for you. It's been waiting for you. It has your name on it, and it knows your address, and it is looking for I'm going to prove that tonight. It is physically looking for you. He said, goodness and mercy. What? No, you didn't hear that. No, 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 you didn't hear that. <clears throat> I didn't know goodness and mercy was a thing. But obviously, it got legs. Obviously, it got legs. Goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life. You got to know that that is what God has set aside for you. See, sinners can't say that. <clears throat> the believer can say that. Okay? And that's heavy. Goodness and mercy. If I had time, I'd, I'd talk about goodness and mercy and what that really means to your everyday lifestyle. But God says, I got your name on a harvest. I, I, I got, you know, your address already set aside for deliverance. You know, I don't do a lot of this um, ordering online. I'm just an older guy. I just, I like to physically go touch it. But the limitations of that, it, it takes effort. It just takes effort, you know. You know, um, you know, this Amazon stuff, you know, just blows me away, you know. I said, Santa, we needed some more Epsom salt, and she took a picture of it, sent it to our assistant, she ordered it that day, got it that evening. I'm like, my God. <laughs> Somebody say, God got my name on it. He got my, he knows my address. He can give it to you real quick now. Oh, he, he, you don't got the physical go. He said, I already know where you're at. I already sent it before you ordered it because I know your mind. I got to bless the believer. I got to bless my children so they can be an example to those that come around. This is why fellowship is so important to the believer. I know you can stay home and worship him, but God said there's more to it than staying home. I need for somebody to see you get up every day, every week, come to church, do what's necessary. So somebody say, if, if he can go through it, if she can go through it, surely I can go through it. Somebody say, he has my name. He has my name. He has my address. You have to learn how to pull it down from heaven. The Bible says, as it is in heaven. So what does that mean? God said, I have already desired what is going on in heaven, how it's going on. I want that down on earth, and I need some representatives. I need somebody to live heaven life down here. And the last I checked, there ain't nobody broke in heaven. The last I checked, nobody's sick in heaven. The last I checked, <laughs> things operate smooth up there. <laughs> he said, learn how to pull it down. Learn how to pull it down. Jesus was saying that we should pray that the, that the way things are in heaven, amen, is the way they should be on earth. That's what he said, pray. So you want to learn how to pull it down and live it because it is available unto you. I am tired of living a good life by myself. I need somebody to come up there with me. Uh, you want to come, Jeff? I need somebody to come on up. Yeah. Really, I need somebody to come on up. I ain't trying to brag. I just said, look here. I have decided I like that better than down here. Now, I used to be a roofer, and I used to, do, hey, man, you know, <laughs> sling that hard talk. Four years of this hard stuff. Minimum wage, I did that, you know. I'd rather live the way I'm living now, right, okay? Uh, all I'm saying, uh, so I, I'm not, okay. 
I'm not afraid of hard work. And I know what hard work did, you know, because it put food on the table, but that's all it could do, okay? They, they, there was no room for nothing else. But when God started elevating me and goodness and mercy started following me, because what happened in due season, I began to reap. I began to reap what I sowed. And guess what? It didn't really come as quick as I thought it should, but God said, hang on in there. I got somebody watching you, and they really need to see this day-by-day day thing. They don't need to see me, you getting saved, and then you ascending up to the high place because that's called divine. I need to see them day by day. Walk by walk. Let them see that in due season. And, and then when you look back over your life, you can see if I had not been for God leading and God, where in the world would I be? And somebody needs to see that. They need to see you walk that thing out. Now, I got a scripture that I want to read, and it's going to sound a little strange. But just allow me to explain it, okay? I want you to go to the book of James. Book of James, chapter 5, verse 4, okay? James, chapter 5, verse 4, because I want to teach on the harvest for a minute. Okay, I want to teach on your harvest for a little bit. And that, 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 that harvest is just the end gathering. God said, I got an end gathering. Hey, but it's already a sign to you, but I want you to see it maybe in a way that you have never seen. Or maybe you never read this scripture. I don't know. So allow me to teach you. Is that okay? Yes. Just read that for us. Behold, the hire of the laborers who have reaped down your fields, which is of you kept back by fraud. Crieth, and the cries of them which have reaped are un entered into the ears of the Lord of Sabaoth. Okay, Sabaoth, you said it right. Okay, Sabaoth. You a scholar. <laughs> That's why I chose you to read. You a scholar. <laughs> How many heard that scripture before? Anybody heard that scripture before? It's, it's, it's kind of strange. If we read it, we just kind of read it over quick because we didn't understand nothing that we were saying. <laughs> So <laughs> allow me to kind of explain, because it's real good. It's real good. First of all, I want you to look, look at, at the end, that, that word that says Sabbath. Okay? It did not say Sabbath. And a lot of us want to switch that to say Sabbath, but it, it didn't say Sabbath. Okay? Uh, that word Sabbath just means host or angels. And it's saying the Lord of angels. Every angel, God says, I am the Lord of. So it's showing you his power, but it's really showing that these angels are going to carry blessings. When God sends them down to bless you, he said, I am the Lord of angels. And, and God said, I'm not getting off my throne to give you a blessing. I got the host or angels to do it. You, you remember in, in the scripture when the Bible says that God, amen, that David prayed, I mean, Daniel prayed, and, and that, 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 that the, the Lord released the angel, and, and, and it took 21 days for, for the, the, the prayer to get to David, and, and, and then God allowed us to get behind the scenes to peek what really has happened, and the Bible says that the angel left immediately out of heaven as soon as the prayer was even prayed. It was dispatched, but, but the angel was detained. Somebody know that the angels was detained because angels have rank and angels have territory. And it had to pass through the second heaven to get down to earth. And there was an angel in charge of the second level that could not get penetrated. And he, oh, you don't hear what I'm talking about. And, and he needed some help, so he had called with reinforcement. I got to get this prayer down to that man that prayed it because he's going to change the world. You remember that? And it took 21 days. Suppose you have quit on the 19th. And God said, I am the Lord of the Sabbath. <laughs> now watch this. James tells us in this scripture, he said there are two cries, okay, that are going on in the world, and they're going on in the world right now. There are two cries that are going on. Now when I say cry, I'm not talking about cries of tears or cries of sorrow. This word cry means yell. Command, declare, okay? So there are, are two cries that are going on in this scripture. Now, what am I teaching right now? Harvest. Harvest, okay? 
Now, number one, it says it in verse four. He says, it is the cry of the harvest of wages. <laughs> okay? That have, that have been held back from the righteous. He says that these wages, this harvest is yelling. They are crying out. They are declaring, I got to find the one that I'm supposed to get to. You don't hear me. I got to find the one that it is assigned to. Amen. Do I have any sowers in here tonight? Do I got any givers in here tonight? Now, you know, now let me say it again. Do I got any sowers in here tonight? Do I got any givers out there that are streaming? In, then if you are so, if you are given, then, then this is your inheritance right here. Have you reaped all of your harvest so far? No, you haven't. Then it must be held back. Something must be holding it back if you have not reaped it yet. Because it is yelling for you. Because the Bible makes it clear, you have Galatians uh, six and seven, sister, read that, because it makes it clear. Galatians 6 and 7. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. God says if you sow it, you're going to reap it. He says a guarantee. It's not an if in there. If you sow it, it's a guarantee you're going to reap it. If you have sown into the ministry, if you have, so I said if you sown into the ministry, and some of us have sown with tears in our eyes, not because, hey, amen, we didn't want to give it, but it, but it was the last we had to give. And, and we needed a miracle, amen, so we gave it in tears. God help us. But God said it's going to come back unto you. But when it come back unto you, it's going to be pressed down, shaking together, Running over, it's going to be more than what you put in. Now, God said, I promise you that. So, if you're not reaping what you have sown, then there is a violation of a spiritual law. <laughs> so, my harvest or my wages have been held up. They're not gone, it's been held up. Number two, the number two cry is, and your harvest that is rightfully belonging to you. Okay, okay? I'm, I'm gonna explain this. The harvest is crying, and the people it belong to should be crying too. And we're not talking about tears now. We're not talking about tears of sorrow, but I'm talking about a bold command that says, I want my harvest, and I want it right now. Because if it's looking for me, it, and it's held up, then there's something blocking the eyes of it. So you're going to have to yell, here, here, yeah, right here, right here. I'm on the front row. I'm on the front Here I am, right here. here is, here's my address, because something has blocked it from getting to you. And, and James has said they are two cries. It's your wages or your harvest, and they are yelling out to you, and you should be yelling out to it. This is my day. This is my moment. I'm going to receive what God has for me. I have been a sower. Because it doesn't belong to the wicked one, and it doesn't belong to Satan. I'm yelling out for my harvest, and at the same time, my harvest is yelling out to me, and my harvest is saying, let me go find out where I belong, because I know it's not right here. Because when it hits your hand, it's going to know, it's going to know it belongs to you. I am talking about what is limiting you from expecta expectations because it's, it's trying to find you. It's trying to find you. And look at somebody, it don't belong to Satan. And it doesn't belong to the sinner. Ooh, they must be mine. And so the angels. The Lord of the Sabbath, God, my God, they are looking for you right now. They said, I got to find them. I got to find them on the 31st day of May. 
I can't let June enter in until I find her. If I got to go to alleys, if I got to go over to the back of Applebee's and kick down the door to find you, I'm going to find you because the Lord of the Sabbath is here. And it's saying, your wages, your harvest is saying, I belong to Jeff and Sandy Chap. Uh, uh, I belong to Leslie. I need somebody. I belong to Ken. It's looking for you. Insert your name in there. It's looking for you. It's looking for you. There are two cries going out in James and said, where are you? It says, release me. I got to find you. Because it is not right for your harvest to stay in the hands of the wicked. The Bible says the wealth of the sinner is laid up for the righteous. If you got any sinner friends, you better warn them right now. You better warn them right now. If you stay around me, I'm getting all of it. It's coming out of that account. Cash app, I don't care. Check, I don't. It's coming out. Because God says the wealth, I'm going to let them work it out. See, see, some things God said, I don't want you to spend 10 years on. I'm going to let them spend 10 years trying to figure it out, and they're going to perfect it. And when they perfect it, I'm going to say, hand it on over. Because I got some sores over here that's been waiting for their harvest. Yeah. Now, now, my question is, are you the righteous? That's the question. Are you the righteous? Are you crying out for your harvest? And if you don't have your harvest, don't you forget about your harvest. Don't you say, I'm just going to give it up, and amen, I'm going to live a struggle, because it's looking for you. Listen, the level, the level of blessing you walk in is directly linked to your level of excellency. God has called you to live a life without limit. How many know that? That's what he called you to. He said, why have you stopped? And who told you to stop? You know why we stop a lot of times? Because of money. Well, past I can only afford what I can afford. Well, well, that has its place. But for those that walk by and not understand what I'm talking about. We're not saying live beyond your means, but there is a, there is a walking yes. that you've got to press through in order to be what God has called you to be because the Lord of the Sabbath says, I'm sending angels down there to assist you, but don't be afraid that you don't have the money yet. Because as you keep on walking, Sister Sheila, you got to understand God began to move doors and barriers out of your way. But he got to see, do you really believe what you said? Because I'm going to do something great in your life. It's just going to be a matter of time. I need to help somebody to keep on walking because you won't receive it because you ran out of money. <laughs> And you have to learn how to break the yoke of limitation. Somebody say, it is a yoke. It's a yoke now. You see, the destiny of man, get this, is a progressive destiny. You never start out where you will end up. You start as a baby, you ain't going to end up as a baby. You're going to grow. And you're going to have babies. And your baby's going to have babies. So you never start out where you're going to end up. No one is born with their destiny already done except in the mind of God. I just want to teach. However, even though your destiny is progressive, there will always be certain forces that will rise to hinder the flow of progression in your life. They always come. You want to do good, but when, but, but when you want to do good, the Bible says evil is what? Now, where did that come from? Now, it's not saying I want to do bad. Mm -mm. It didn't say I intend to do bad. It, it says when I want to do good. How many want to do good? How many want to do good? Well, the Bible promised you something. <laughs> evil will always be present. 
Why? Because we live in a fallen world. Yeah. And the evil don't want to see you succeed. And they don't, wanna see, they don't want you to receive your harvest. And so they're going to make sure they put some roadblocks of hindrance. And one of the biggest ones is limitation. Mm, right, whoever said it, I co-sign now. And one of the biggest things, I, I said it, but I didn't say it right, is the spirit of limitation. Not just limitation, the spirit of limitation. Don't limit God and don't limit yourself. It is time for you to expand your thinking and get this, and you need to stop and, and reject small thinking. Because small thinking will never let you have big stuff. Small thinking is safe. Because you can find 100 people doing, doing, doing that. But how many of are doing the big thing, the grand thing? And not too many doing that. Now, here's the problem with Christians. We have to learn what our calling is. We don't know what we're called to do. Okay? We, we need to learn what is our destiny. And then stay in the framework of that. We don't know how to stay in the framework of what we're really called to do. And because we don't know the framework, we're getting out doing other people's stuff. Because it just looks good. It just looks good on them. But, but that's not what I'm called to do. Everybody's not called to be a school teacher. Everybody's not called to be a fireman. Everybody's not called to do hair. Everybody is not called to work on roads. You got to learn how to stay in the framework because you don't want somebody that work on roads cutting open your belly to see if you got pulps in it. <laughs> Trying to help somebody. And so since we don't know what our calling is, we don't know what our destiny, we don't know how to stay in the framework of it. And see, that's why, that's why I think David says, this is one thing. I do. Yeah. He said that, that I just stay in the presence of God. He says, because I got, I got a tendency to do my own thing. David said, I can get into the flesh real quick. God, my, I need to learn how to stay in the presence. If I can stay in the presence of God, it's going to keep my flesh in check. How many need some flesh kept in check? He said, you stay in my presence. If you can stay right there. See, see, the, the King James says stay in the house of God. But see, you can't stay in the house of God 24-7. No, no, no. It's talking about his presence. Yeah. yeah. So if we can stay in the presence or we can just stay in our framework, then the Bible says you will be successful in everything you do because you have learned how to operate in the boundaries that I put the gifts and talents. And guess what? And you'll be so happy doing that because you know this is my destiny. This is my destiny right here. See, you get unsatisfied and, and not fulfilled when you get outside of yourself. See, so what I'm talking about, oftentimes the limitations we have are created by our own thought life. And sometimes we impose limitations on our own ability. You didn't know you could do it until you did it. Amen. Yeah, you didn't know you can do it. How many have, have, have accepted promotion? You know you couldn't do it. <laughs> you know, Dixon, but here's the problem. But, but that money, that money can pay for this mortgage, that car payment, and them lamb chops. It's, it, yes, it can. <laughs> so you take it. But you didn't know you could do it until you did it. And now you're expert at it. <laughs> Don't put limitations. I'm going to tell you a story. It's a, good, a great illustration. Great illustration. In India, there is actually a school where they train elephants. Okay? And what they do when a, uh, when a baby elephant is born and kind of weaned from its mother, they take a huge stake and put it into the ground and they tie a rope around the leg of the baby elephant, okay? From that time, it is basically born, that baby elephant is tied to that stake. No matter how much it struggles, that elephant cannot move that stake. Now, when that elephant gets bigger and bigger and bigger, 
and when they get fully grown, because they have been tied to that stake, amen, so long, get this, they can pull that stake out of the ground if they really wanted to, but because they have been programmed. This as far as you can go. You have the ability to go further, but because you have been programmed all your life, this is the only height you can go to. And when you hit that height, you stop. And God is trying to help somebody understand you can go a whole lot higher than you. If that elephant only knew, if he only knew, I can pull up this stake and I can pull up several trees at the same time. But because it has been programmed all of this life, I'm trying to help some black people here tonight. Night. You can go higher than you are right now. You can do more than you can do right now. God said, you are the apple of my eye. When I scooped down into the ground and made man, it was black. You don't hear what I'm saying? It was black, so when I pulled it up, it was black. Everything came. There is no color that can be made outside. I'm just trying to show the elephant. Just trying to show the elephant. You can do more than what you're doing. But somewhere in your programming, you stop. Because you've been programmed to stop. You need to see somebody that's going to jerk up that stake and say, hey, we're going to do some big stuff, big thing, because my harvest is calling me. And, and, and see, and you can't be afraid when you hit that roadblock. You can't be afraid because that's all it is, a roadblock. There is a detour. There is a detour. And every time they do road construction, if they're going to block up a street, they got to have a detour. Now, it may take you a little longer, but it's going to get you back on track. Some of you have gotten off track, but I need to prophesy your harvest is yelling right now. It's yelling for you. Come this way. Come this way. So, the elephant's limitation is not in his strength. It's in his ability to perceive based on what has been trained to do. I'm trying to break doctrinal thoughts off here. I'm trying to tell you you can do anything you want to do. I'm trying to tell you you can do it whenever you want to do it. You don't got eight men do 12th grade, 13th grade, 14th grade for God to bless you. God said, I could do it in ninth grade. I, I, that was up to you. They told you got to go to 12th grade. <laughs> I need some help right now. I need some help right now. I done told you before, I, I got a car in the ninth grade. And the, I'm driving to school with the teachers, amen. Couldn't tell you where I got the gas. But I had gas, and I used to drive down to Jacksonville 35 miles to go school shopping with money I don't even know where it came from. It had to come from somewhere. You don't hear me, man. Trying to help somebody get some understanding. God bless me in the ninth grade. You hear me? To have more than some of the teachers that was teaching me in my class. I'm trying to help somebody. God is not limited by grade. God is not limited by education. God is not limited by status. He said, whatsoever a man desires. What's what you desire? He didn't put no age limit on it. You desire? I give it to you because it's in my will. Oh, my God. Can I just continue to teach? LeBron James got drafted out of high school. LeBron James was a millionaire before he got his first contract. He's high school. He's 18 years old. Now, traditional wisdom say, go to college. <laughs> go spend four more years in college. But guess what? I got the skills to do this now. I, I'm going to make a choice. Am I going to do the traditional route? Do what everybody else do and going to miss four years of millions because they said? God said, I can bless you right now. I'm not advocating you not go to college. That's, that's, that's your desire. That's whatever you do. You know, I just choose not to in my early years. But in my early years, I did have a knot. Mm. 
I had a knot. <laughs> I had a wad of cash in my pocket, amen. Guess what? I had so much money in my pocket, I made all of my friends that graduate with me quit college and try to come in the military because they thought military was balling like that. Uh, See, when you have favor, when you have favor, you don't need all of that. You don't need all of that. God said, I can do it right now. Stop the limitation. Because he's ready to bless somebody tonight. Can you just receive it tonight? Yes, sir. Somebody said, I got to pull it down by faith. What is in heaven, I got to pull that down and live that thing down here on earth. And God says, I will do it. And it can start right now. I said, it can start right now. He said, I can pay your mortgage off right now. Do you believe on that level? I can do it right now. I don't have to wait 30 years to do this. See, some of you want to do it the traditional way, but God said, can I just do it right now? Can I just, amen, stop by you right now because it's been looking for you. It's yelling out to you. Somebody said, I just got to believe it. I just got to believe it. Woo. I think I'm done. I got some more to give you, but I got to... Let me just say this a little bit because it's, it's, I'm not even going to say this next week because it don't, won't fit. But I'm going to say this. There are limitations we put on ourselves, okay? But the other phase of limitations are the limitations I put on you and you put on me. Okay. I cannot stop you from what you think about me. I have no control over that. You can think whatever you think about me. I have no control over what you think about me. But if I surrender to what you think about me, God, and believe what you think about me, then I, se I severely limit, my God, by what you say about me. Because you say you can't do that. That's what you say. You say you're too stupid to do that. You will never succeed in that. That's, that's what you say. And if I believe that, then I limit myself. And God is trying to help somebody get somebody else's mind out of you. Because every time you try to go higher, that is the voice you hear. I don't know if it came from mama, I don't know if it came from daddy, I don't know if it came from grandma, but every time, every time you try to go higher, you hear this old voice in the back of your head, you can't do it, you can't succeed, you're going to be just like a crazy daddy. And I'm trying to break that spirit because it is a spirit. It's called a familiar. A familiar, and we're going to break that tonight. We're going to break that spirit off your life because I would love for everybody to say I'm there, but I know everybody is not there right now, and that's okay because, amen, your harvest is looking for you. Your harvest is looking for you, and if you can just say, here I am, God is willing to break that spirit. You have to do that. God can be standing right here, but he's not going to force himself on you. You got to say, here I am, Lord. I need that spirit off me. Notice I didn't say that spirit in you. If you are a believer, it can't get in you. It can't. It can be on you. Depression is on you. So God said, whatever that thing is on you. See, it keeps coming on you. It don't stay. See, that, see and, and that fools us because it, it leaves. It takes a break. It go take a water break, bathroom break. Got to go somewhere, do something, right? But it comes back. And when it comes back, it takes you deeper in, into a funk. And I'm trying to help somebody. Tonight, you can be free of that spirit. And I don't know where it came from. I don't know how long it's been in your life, but I can tell you right now, if you can pull that thing down, God said it's yours. It is yours. Who, who is free? Who is free? I need somebody. Are you free? Are you free? I'm going to pull that thing down. I need that thing off me. Let this mind be in you 
that was also in Christ Jesus. The same spirit that raised Christ from the dead is the same spirit that lives in us. I'm here to tell you, you can stop your limitations by just receiving the harvest that's yelling at you. God bless you. I see you on Sunday morning. Mother's right. Mother's Day was amazing. But you know, at Raleigh North Christian Center, we got some mighty men of God. We got great fathers. We got great men at Raleigh North Christian Center. And you know, the Bible says, honor your mother and father. And we've been leaving off that father. <laughs> honor your mother and father. And we're going to honor them. We're going to honor the men. We're going to honor the fathers. And men of God, and you know what I said, you're, somebody's watching you. You are a father figure to somebody, whether you got kids or not. And whether your father was a good father or not, the Bible says honor, honor them. And we're going to honor them. That's why we're having the, the breakfast. Can y'all put the advertising back up? We're having that breakfast because we're going to celebrate the men. Okay, give it up for the men. The mighty men of God, they're growing. They're here. They're in the house. And so, what an awesome gift. Why don't you register your man of God, your brother, your son, your husband, your father. What a great Father's Day gift. Register them. Encourage them. You know, women, come on now. You know, we got to push them along. <laughs> we don't want to wait to the last minute because, you know, we do everything in excellence. And we're trying to properly prepare the men you're going to have some good food, some good fellowship, some good speakers. It's going to be a great time of fellowship. And I always say, you might not need a friend, but somebody needs you as a friend. So go and be there for someone else. And plus, you want to go and be there because a the man of God had bid you to be a part of it. Okay? Your spiritual father said, hey, let's get together, iron shopping and iron. We're going to celebrate each other. We're going to encourage each other. So come and be a part. What a powerful witness to see all those mighty men of God together, socializing, enjoying each other, encouraging each other. Your brother's keeper. Come on now. Let's be about it. So sign up, and it's open to everybody. You don't have to be a member to be a part of it. But come and be a part and encourage someone to register so we can properly prepare, and it's going to be great. You know we're going to do it right. We always do things right. So pray about it and encourage and say, God, who can I invite? Who can I uh, uh, um, uh, get to register? Who can I sponsor? Who can I give a gift to to be a part of this event? Okay? Can y'all do that for me? Encourage your man. Encourage your brother, your, your uncle, your father. And then Father's Day is coming. Invite your dad to church. Invite a man to church. Because really that Saturday is the breakfast and that Sunday is Father's Day. Okay, and we're going to honor the men and celebrate the men just like we did the mothers. Okay, so let's give it up for fathers. Give it up for fathers. And God is going to bless you. God is going to bless you for honoring your mother and your father. That's going to be a powerful testimony. Somebody's going to be healed. I know during that breakfast there's going to be healing. There's going to be deliverance. There's going to be forgiveness. I'm just going to be a lot of uh, open wounds that's going to be sold up. God's going to heal the men, you know, that's going through hurt and don't let anger with the Father. Anger is going to be released, I'm telling you. So it's going to be good, okay? Brother going to come dismiss us. I'm so excited. So let's register. And space is limited. 
So don't wait to the last minute and try to register because the space is limited, okay? All right, God bless you. Amen. Let's give our first lady another hand. Um, <clears throat> I want to piggyback on what she said before she started talking about uh, fathers. Uh, we heard tonight, this is how we're going to do offering, because we heard tonight that our harvest is looking for us and is calling out our name. And our harvest may not know our address. Okay? So I need for you to lean to your neighbor and say, neighbor, you get ready to do an act of faith. Tell them, say, neighbor, Pastor Ryan is getting ready to ask you to yell out your address in about three seconds. Tell them, neighbor, you might want to stand up. This is an act of faith, as Apostle Chapman said. Only if you believe your harvest knows your name, but it does not know where you live. So at the count of three, I want you to yell out your, ad your physical address as loud as you can for your harvest. It's calling your name. You hear it calling you, but it does not know your address. One, two, three. your address by an act of faith one more time to make sure that it heard you correctly. One, two, three, come on, say it. 413. Now if you believe that your harvest is on its way to your house, why don't you give God about 30 seconds of good praise? It's jumping in the car and it's coming to your house right now. I told you it's an act of faith, an act of faith. If you don't believe it, don't praise him. But if you believe it, give him about 15 more seconds of good praise. Praise him because your harvest is on the way. While y'all praising in here, streaming family, I want you to yell out your address in your house. Let your harvest know where you live. We get ready to give. Give link has already popped up. This is a wonderful moment for you to sow. So make sure you give tonight, whether you do it through our app or the give link that's already popping up on your screen. All right, y'all, we got about 10 more seconds of praise. The ushers are coming right now with envelopes. I want you to name your seed tonight. You already told it where it lives. Make sure if you use an envelope tonight, put your address up there real nice and big for your harvest to know where to come. My harvest is on the way. You see it up on the screen, three ways to give tonight, Robin Dorm. You can do it here in person. You can text it. You can use our app. You can go out to the kiosk and you can use your car tonight. And you go give tonight because your harvest is on the way. Again, brothers, please make sure that you register. Register tonight. Our band of God has put the mandate out for us to register tonight for the men's breakfast. So please make sure you do that. To all my first time guests, thank you guys so much for coming. Behind you on your left shoulder, there's a blue table. They're holding up signs for you. Our first time guests who want you to connect with us, make sure you stop by that table. Leave some information. Let us know how you heard about us. Even if you want to join tonight, you forgot to join on Sunday, but you're here tonight. You say, oh, man, I forgot to join on Sunday. You can do it tonight at the blue table as well. All RNCC members, if you are not a part of a ministry, we got the red table. They are waiting for you in the back. The dream team needs you. 
many ministries here for you to get involved. That's how you get to know your brother and your sister. So make sure you stop by the red table tonight. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you that our harvest has been calling us, calling us, and calling us, and calling us. And now, Father, tonight we respond to the call of our harvest. We have yelled out our address, and we are commanding our harvest to come not only to our address, but to our zip code. Because once it hits our house, it's going to bless the whole street. And out there, bless the whole street, it's going to bless the entire neighborhood. And after it blesses the neighborhood, it's going to bless the entire community. And Father, we thank you for allowing us to be a part of this. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray that you strengthen Dr. Chapman as he's poured out tonight. And we thank you, God, that the harvest has hit his house in the name of Jesus. And Father, we thank you, God, for what you're doing right now. And so we leave this place expecting to receive and to walk in our harvest, in the name of Jesus. So we thank you for being Jehovah Sabaoth, the Lord of the angels, in the name of Jesus. And we praise you for it now. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. One more time, shout out your address for your harvest. It's coming, it's coming, it's coming. Consider yourself dismissed. We'll see you guys on Sunday. Be 